Hello everyone and welcome to Long Toys. Today we'll be taking a look at uh, Cogman, the Lux Class Cogman from Transformers The Last Night. Now technically this is the Japanese version as you can tell by, they kind of put a sticker here that says Transformers. There's a sticker here that says TLK29 for The Last Night and then his name Cogman. Um, in the Japanese line they numbered all the figures. And I mean not just Deluxe Class, Deluxe Class, Voyager Class, Leader Class those turbo one-step chargers, whatever they call them now, uh, they were all included, so they were all numbered. But basically this is the American version, but with some Japanese stickers. You can tell the packaging is pretty much the American version, and they just put a sticker here, they put a sticker here, they put a sticker down here for their own warnings. Uh, this is kind of the same deal, their own sticker. So you can see the rest of the packaging is in English, well, multiple languages, but it's the normal uh packaging we would get over here in america so not that big a deal i decided to grab this on hlj because i really don't think cogman is ever going to show up in stores over here um wave three barely trickled out i've still never seen that walmart exclusive wave three hot rod i don't know if that's even going to happen um this is technically i think the only deluxe from wave four and since the movie kind of bombed, the toys have not been moving. And as you can probably tell in your area, there's tons of Wave 1 everywhere. We're finally starting to see Wave 2, but I don't know if Wave 4 is ever going to happen. But this should be the same toy, and it was pretty much the same price, I have to be honest. With these things being $20 a piece now in stores, I think the Japanese one up HLJ after their discount price was $21.22, so... Not really that much of a price hike, and I didn't mind because I wanted this figure very badly, and I didn't think there was any other way I was going to find it. So, that's what I did. But yeah, let's go ahead, let's get Cogman out of the packaging, and we'll take a closer look. Alright, so here is Cogman out of the packaging, and I have to say, he looks fantastic in my opinion. I really like this figure a lot. You have a lot of really nice uh, detail and the paint. I mean, you kind of have a black wash going... Like the whole torso area here in the shins, the feet, the shoulders. It really looks nice. You have all this great gold painting. The head sculpt looks fantastic. I mean, I really have nothing to complain about. Yeah, he's got some car kibble, but it's pretty nicely compact into his like little backpack area. So I really don't think it hinders any kind of articulation or anything. It's just a really nice figure. I don't know if the Japanese version got a little bit better paint apps. I mean, that's usually the case. But again, if it's really just them transporting our figure over there with some stickers, it might be what would have eventually showed up over here. And I'm not saying it will never show up. I just, it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be one of those figures that comes out at the end of a line and just really hard to find. Maybe Hasbro Toy Shop will eventually release it. I don't know. But it's a really nice looking figure. I think he looks really great. He comes with this sword, which is um, very reminiscent of the like design of all those swords we saw in the movie. I'll see if I can get a little bit closer so you can see the hilt to see what I mean. All those like Knights of the Round table swords. I mean, it's fairly simplistic, but you know, the paint looks good. It might actually be two different pieces of plastic. I can't tell. I think it is. But it's a nice looking sword. I like it. We'll go ahead and it pops right into his hand. Not too difficult. Uh, the only thing is because of how he transforms, he has this panel kind of behind his hand. So it can only go so far. I guess if you wanted to pull that panel out, you could put it all the way into his hand. Um, and then kind of just close that back as far as it'll go. I mean, that's really up to you. If you close the panel all the way, he can still hold the sword, obviously just not as far in. So I kind of like to just kind of fold it back, push the sword in, and then just kind of close it as far as it'll go. Not a huge problem. Still looks great. He looks cool wielding it. I like that a lot. We'll take that out for a second so we can talk about articulation. Uh, the head is on a ball joint. You have a ball joint in the shoulder here. Uh, the kind of shoulder pad you can kind of play with. There's some swivel there. Um, the ball joint is independent. That's actually in the shoulder. This swivels on the shoulder piece.
piece as well. So uh, there is a bicep swivel. There is 90 degrees in the elbow. Uh, the wrist does not have articulation because of the transformation, which we'll get to. Nothing in the waist, but there is a ball joint in the hip. There is the thigh swivel. Uh, there is a knee, but it's very tight. But it is 90 degrees, as you can see. So, I guess it's good that it's tight. Um, there is some play here in the ankle due to the transformation, but the legs are a little weird. And he really doesn't have any heels, which is kind of a bummer. It's like the only complaint I have. I wish he had, like, something could fold out a little bit or something just to give him a little bit more heels. It's really the only thing. I mean, he still stands. As long as you can get him in a pose where his weight is, you know, evenly distributed, he'll stand, no problem. Um, but I just wish he had a little bit more in the, in the way of heels. That's the only thing I can complain about. Otherwise, it's a really awesome looking figure. Great articulation, great pain apps, and he is a headmaster. That's right. Wasn't really shown at all in the movie, um, but we'll get in close here. First of all, the head sculpt is great. Beautiful blue paint for the eyes, nice gold detailing just really well done so of course he transforms like any other titans return headmaster he doesn't really have any paint on the smaller head which is kind of a bummer but he's got the same kind of little ball joints in the hands so basically this is the cogman we saw in the movie this is the cogman we saw pairing or palling around town with anthony hopkins um and he's driving this body as a car all around there was a point in the movie where he was supposed to transform and be revealed that he's a headmaster and the car he's been driving around is his body transtector whatever term you want to use that never happened i guess budget i don't know the reason but it got cut and it's really a shame he's also the reason nitro zeus head comes off and looks like it has a headmaster connection because what was supposed to happen in the movie he was supposed to be fighting knock nitro zeus's head off then transform and put his head on nitro zeus's body and then go around smashing up the, the place so again that all got cut but it did still survive in the toys which i think is really neat um so yeah he's a great looking headmaster i think he looks fantastic now like i said it's it's a normal titan's return headmaster joint so i have uh just thunderwing here just the first one i grabbed that was handy so you can put any other titan Titan Master, Prime Master, whatever you like. He's not going down in there very great, but it's all right. They'll all go on there, so you can swap out heads, do whatever you like. Very cool. I love that about this toy. I really wish it didn't get cut from the movie, because I think that would have been something really cool to do in the movie. And I don't, like I said, I have to assume it was just budget or time, because, you know, what other reason? Um... Or they thought it would be too much work or something, but that's kind of like budget. So, I don't know. It's a bummer, though. I really wanted to see that happen. And this is a really, really cool robot. So, I wish we saw it happen. But, let's go ahead and get on to the transformation for this. So, the transformation is actually pretty excellent. Um, and really not overly complicated at all. You can start by folding this panel underneath. Straighten that out. And then you can fold the fists back into the forearm like that. Repeat the same thing over on this side. Uh, come down to the feet, and you're going to kind of angle these in towards each other. And then you're going to bring these down as you start to bring these up. And then this panel will fold out. Just like that. And then you'll kind of bring this around and fold this back up like that. And that's going to become the rear of the car section. It's just you have to be careful because the joints are kind of weird. The way that they're connected to the leg. So you just want to be careful you don't break anything. I guess you can't bring that up too early. Once you flip that out you get a lot more play. But you can see how like this is connected to the leg by itself. And then this has to kind of fold around it. So... And then you can peg the legs together. Kind of. That'll, that'll happen better in a minute when we start doing the rest of this stuff. 
um, you can go ahead and peg. You can see that there's a, a tab slot right there. And then this tab is going to go in there. So you can kind of peg this together like that. Do the same thing on this side. Cool little Autobot symbol. Now you're going to come to this section. You can kind of pull this whole thing back. Just kind of let that hang back here for a second. Um, right in here, and it's a little tough to see, but right in there, you can actually pull this whole section out. And you can hear it snap. Now see how that's, there's like a rod in there and I pulled that out. Then you can spin this, get these out of the way, spin this around and fold this piece out and then push it back down. So now that you have the front section, you can fold these in and you can see there's a giant tab right there. And you can see there's a tab right here in front of the wheel. So you're going to just bring these in and then it's just kind of lining up all the tabs and everything. Uh, the tabs on the side here will click together. There we go. Click on this side. And then you can push this all together. So you can see the car mode is pretty much taking shape. You're going to come down here and there is a double joint here and here. So you kind of need to flip this and make sure you get the joint right so that you can fold it up. Just be careful. I'm always afraid I'm going to snap that if you don't get the joint right. Uh, at this point, some panels might come unpegged, but... You can pop them back together. So at this point, you're going to extend this forward. And then this will drop back. And peg in here to shore all of this up. And then this will pop forward and peg into place. So that is a really fantastic car mode. I like this a lot. Now it does suffer, oh I'm sorry, I completely forgot this whole part here. Um, this whole crotch piece folds down like this. Uh oh, I'm, un I'm unpegging everything. So that way it can roll, because otherwise as you saw it kind of sits on that piece because that piece extends a little past the wheels. So you just kind of put that crotch piece back in there. And now it can roll. But yeah, really, really nice. I like this a lot. And it rolls so smoothly. You can take the sword and you can see how there is a little notch right there. And that can peg in right here. If you don't have the back popping apart. There we go. So you can peg that on and then that just kind of rests where you just folded down the crotch piece. So that's sword storage on the back. But the coolest part, my favorite part, you can lift this up. And there are spots for two, count them two, Titan Masters to ride inside this car. How fantastic is that? Now, if you get adventurous, it's very difficult. Um... Let me take them out for a second. But there are pegs. You can see one right there, and there's another one right there. So if you can try to get the peg in his foot to peg on there, they'll stay in place. I don't even bother. It just seems really difficult. Also, the steering wheel is on the other side of the car. Now, I believe in the movie they were driving these around in England. So it could be because of that. It could be because it's the Japanese version. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever see an American version to compare it to, so we'll have to see. Um, but I love the fact that it can hold two Titan Masters. I think that is the coolest thing. So I'm going to show you. You can put these guys in, and you can still close this up. And then you can just see them there through the window. <laughs> That's really awesome. Technically, you can even kind of lay a third one here in this space in the front. You know, if, say for example, Thunderwing's been out partying, you need to take him home, but he needs to lie down. You can lie him down there in the front. And then you can fit three Titan Masters inside. <laughs> so 
So I don't know. I, that's my favorite part of this whole thing. I love that. I love that it can fit too. And it looks like they're riding around inside a car. That's just so much fun to me. I love that. And plus you have the sword storage. I mean, it's just, it's a fantastically engineered and developed alt mode for this toy. And I just, it's fantastic. I have nothing bad to say about this alt mode. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love this figure. For me, hands down, it is the best of the entire, well, at least the deluxe class size for the last night. Easily the best. We've had a lot of good Voyager class figures. Optimus was great. Megatron was great. Uh, Nitro was great. Even Hound was pretty fun. But I would say for the deluxe class, this guy easily takes it. Um, I'm kind of bummed that he won't probably see massive retail release because I wish everyone who wants this guy could get a hold of him. The Headmaster aspect is so much fun. The robot mode looks great with all the detail molded in, all the paint that they did. The robot mode has great articulation. I feel like they did a great job uh, really compounding and, you know, putting together the kibble on his back. So it just kind of looks like a little backpack and it doesn't really hinder any kind of leg articulation. It's not all down his back or anything like that. The vehicle mode looks fantastic. It goes together very nicely. The transformation is somewhat simple but fun. Everything clicks together fairly well. You don't have a lot of problems with the panels. Um, I love the fact that it can hold two, two, possibly even three Titan Masters in the vehicle mode. It has sword storage. I love this figure. I can't say enough nice things about it. If you have the means of getting one for a reasonable price, definitely pick it up. I cannot recommend it enough. The only thing I can nitpick is the fact that he doesn't have better heels in robot mode. But as you can see, he can stand. I mean, he's not being propped up by this box. It's just in the background. So, I mean, it's... I wish he had better heels just for real good stability's sake, but once you find a pose, you can stand him. He's not going to fall over. I mean, he's not in any you know danger of completely falling over or anything like that. He's not toppling or, or back heavy or anything like that. It's just a really nice, well-balanced, fun toy with a great transformation, great robot mode, great vehicle mode. Headmaster aspect is so much fun. I'm just saying the same stuff over and over again at this point, but... This is a great figure. I love this figure. Easily my favorite deluxe of the whole movie line. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at Deluxe Class Cogman from Transformers The Last Night. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.